Hi, my name is Henrik. I'm the creator of Figment Telephoto Skies. And in this video, I want to show you how you can use these cloud and sky images to add high quality detail to the backgrounds of any of your 3D renders. But before I get into the tutorial, I want to just give you a brief overview of what the idea behind Telephoto Skies is. And this is what the full collection looks like. You have 50 skies in 8K resolution, all horizon locked and stored in 16-bit half float EXR. So let's take a look at the resolution and compare it to a typical HDRI. So what you see on the outside is an HDRI from Chaos Cosmos. It has 360 degrees of coverage and is in 7.5K. This is great for lighting and great for reflections. And in the middle is one of the telephoto skies. This is an 8K resolution, but it only has about 24 degrees of coverage. And this cannot be used for lighting. But let's zoom in and see how they compare in close up. To be fair, you can absolutely get an HDRI that are in vastly greater resolution than 7.5K, but in order to match the resolution of the telephoto skies, that HDRI would need to be in approximately 120,000 pixels wide. All of the telephoto skies are perfectly exposed with unclipped highlights and shadows, so you can expose this any way you like. There are no birds, airplanes, foliage, buildings, or anything like that in the background. And there is no grain or noise in the images. And they don't have any visible compression artifacts. And if you want to check out the skies before buying anything, you can download the free sample. I'll put a link below the video where you can find these. Okay, so let's jump straight into the tutorial. This is the shot that I'll be working on. And this is what it looks like in 3ds Max. So I just have a simple hill with some rocks scattered on it and a road. And then I have this cool concept car made by BML Guerrero. Apologies if I butchered your name, but thanks a lot for letting me use your car. I'll put a link below the video where you can check out his work. And then the background, I have some hills made with tie flow. And this is the view from the camera. So right now, this is set up with a V-Ray sunlight system with the cloud feature enabled. Um, and I should state that I really like this feature. I think they're, they're super useful and they look great for reflections and they look great in wide angle shots. But I think once you zoom into them, they start to look a little bit fake. I'm sure this will be improved in the future, but I think for now, nothing beats real life clouds. So I'll just reset that and open up the material editor and add a new V-Ray bitmap. Uh, and these are the images that are available in the current free sample for Telephoto Skies. Of course, in the full collection, you get 50 plus 5. For this one, I want this sort of low sunset, so I'll pick the last image. All of these images are in EXR, and they're in linear sRGB. So you should set the color space to none or inverse gamma, and then set the RGB primaries to sRGB but we'll revisit these in a bit. I should point out that for this example, I'm using the ACES CG color space. It's not a requirement at all in order to use these background skies. I just really like to use it because it gives a much greater latitude whenever you're doing exposure in your 3D shots. And I think the colors just turn out to be so much richer and more beautiful. And I've actually already set up a lens effect that gives a bit of a glare to, to the highlights or overexposed areas of the image. But for now, let's just keep it disabled so we don't have any extra clutter while we work on this. And let's just rename this to make it nice and tidy. And add a V-Ray light material and just plug it into the light color. And rename that as well. Okay. And I'll just enable emit light on backside. This is just in case I want to flip the plane that I'll put the material on. And now I'll just create a plane in the front view. And all of the Telephoto Sky images are in 2.5 to 1 aspect ratio. So I'll just hit in 2500 times 1000, and that'll give me the correct aspect ratio. I'll just apply the material to the object. And just some quick tips. Whenever you're working with the V-Ray Light material, you might have an issue where you can't see the material in the viewport. So the first thing you should do is hit the bitmap texture and then enable the button that says show shaded material in viewport. And if that doesn't work or the object in the viewport just turns white, just select the V-Ray Light material and then change the color from white to black. I believe the reason that this happens is that the texture is actually being added to the color in the viewport. It seems to work fine for this demonstration, but it's just an issue that I've seen pop up again and again. All right, uh, now I just need to place it in my scene. 
but first I want to place the pivot point so it's at the bottom of the image at the horizon. This will make it a lot easier for me to scale and place the background where I want it. Okay, so let's just uh, zoom out and it needs to be placed somewhere behind these mountains. Uh, and right now I'm just sort of eyeballing this. I mean, you can move it even further back and then scale it up accordingly. Uh, one sort of rule of thumb that you should keep in mind is that the horizontal field of view of these images, uh, the full view of them, are approximately compared to an 80 millimeter lens. But of course, you're free to scale these any way you like. I think at the end, what's most important is that it looks good and it looks convincing. Okay, so here's a little simple trick I like to use to make it a bit easier for me to sort of find the edges of the image. So I'll just make a couple of cylinders uh, and then move them just to the edge of the screen. Like so, and a little bit outside. So that's the limit for the right side of the camera. Uh, I'll just copy this and place it all the way on the left. And select both of them and just make them not renderable. So right now, if I place this inside of these columns, it should cover the entire area. This one was still a bit in the frame. I'll just nudge it out a bit. Okay, so now I have coverage, but actually I want this to be bigger. I believe the lens on my camera in this scene is set at 300 millimeters. Uh, but again, like I said earlier, I would care more about that it looks good and convincing uh, rather than having it set up, you know, this is supposed to match exactly this and that edge. Uh, but that's totally up to you. Okay, uh, I think this starts to look good. Uh, but I just noticed there's a bit of a hole uh, just above the mountains, so I'll just notch it down a little bit. Okay, this looks pretty good. Now I'll just go into the object properties and disable receive and cast shadows so it won't affect the lighting. And I'll also disable apply atmospherics. And I'll show you why in a bit. So let's just hit render. And we can just adjust the multiplier in the V-Ray light material. But yeah, I think this feels a little bit too flat for me. And even though these are in linear sRGB, we can do whatever we want with them. So one thing you can do is enable a color map and just adjust the colors like you would any other uh, material to get some more contrast or punch into it. And that's definitely one way to go. Uh, but actually for this, uh, I feel like I want to pull the heavy lever and just apply an sRGB curve to it. And as you can see, this turns it quite dark. But if you go in and then boost the multiplier in the V-Ray light material, we can get it all the way up here. And I think this looks beautiful. I mean, I really like the, the richness uh, of the colors in this. But again, you can color correct these however you like. Uh, just know that they are in linear sRGB color space. But what you do to enhance them or beef up the colors beyond that point, that's totally up to you. Just a quick reminder, I'm still working in ACES CG color space. So any overexposed values will look a lot better through this workflow than if you're not using ACES. But yeah, so I really like the background right now, but the lighting on the car and the road is still coming from the V-Ray sunlight. And so is the reflections apart from the small sliver of the background that's reflecting on the car. So what I want to do is I want to add an HDRI both for the lighting and for the reflections. And to do that, I'll use one of the HDRIs from the Chaos Cosmos library. And I want something where the sun is quite low and we have that rich, warm orange. And I think this one looks great. So I'll just import that. And I'll just lock the texture to the icon so that I can rotate it and it'll actually stick to the light. 
and I'll just select the V-Ray Sunlight, but I won't disable it. I'll just hit exclude and then set it to include and select nothing. This way it'll still have an effect on the V-Ray Aerial Perspective effect, which I'll add in a minute. And I'll just disable the clouds as well. Okay, so let's see what it looks like with the HDRI. And this is probably going to be a bit too bright, but I'll just go in and then tweak the multiplier and then dial it down and keep doing that until I get something that I like. So this is a bit better, maybe something like that. And now I'll just go in and rotate it and basically eyeball it until I get something that I like. Just a bit more. Maybe something like that. And yeah, you could sort of crank it up like that, but I actually like it when it's a bit darker in the foreground. So I'll just undo that and let's check it on another frame. Waiting for the render. Yeah, I think this looks pretty good. And again, for this example, I picked the background first and then did the lighting after. A more traditional approach would be to do the lighting first and then go in and find a background that will work for the shot. But you can do this any way you like. Okay, so now I'm pretty happy with the lighting and the background. I think it looks good. But I do have these mountains in the far background in front of the clouds. And I'd like these to blend a little better into the environment. And to do that, I'm going to add a V-Ray aerial perspective. And just enable effect environment rays. And now I'll just color pick something from the background. Let's just start with that. And remember that the V-Ray sunlight system is still active in the scene, but it's not, it's not hitting any objects, but it will affect the V-Ray aerial perspective. So if I move the sun up, it's going to have an effect on how these colors that I pick in here will look. So this is a bit of a, a mix of moving the sun and then tweaking and, and dialing in these numbers until you get something that you like. So I'm basically eyeballing this. Let's lower the height a bit. And increase the light. Yeah, I'm not quite happy with the hue yet. Uh, so I'm just gonna tweak this a little bit. And maybe just lower the sun a little bit. Yeah, that's all right. I think I'm gonna park it here and move on. So I think we're pretty close to calling this done. Just a few tiny details left. Okay, so I'll just go in here and enable my lens effect to get a bit more of a bloom effect from the background and a little bit from the headlights on the car. So yeah, I think this looks pretty good, except for this little detail that's been nagging me, and that is the reflection on the top of the car. There's a bit of a bluish tint in that, and it's actually coming from the Telephoto Sky background image. I want to fix this, so I'll just select the plane. I can see that I forgot to name this, so I'll just do that. And I'll just lower the segment to one, so it's a bit easier to edit. And I'll just add a UVW map and sandwiched in between that and the plane, I'll put in an edit poly. And now I can just select the top two vertices and then move them down. And because I have the UVW map on top, the mapping is not going to be squeezed or stretched. And this way I can just crop out uh, the part that I don't want. I think that looks better. But anyway, this is just a quick way that you can sort of go in and then edit and do small tweaks like this. All right, now I think it's done. So that's it for me. I hope you found this useful. And remember that you can get the free samples if you want to check out this collection. I'll put a link below the video. And thanks for watching.